Everybody, welcome to Blockbusting, the podcast where we love to hate the movies. I'm your host, Jay Light. Joining me today, my guest, Jessica Wellington. Hey, thanks for having me. <laughs> Why are you nodding at me like that? Because <laughs> you just said that, like, the, 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 the podcast where we love to hate the movies. Yeah, and I was like, oh, now it makes sense. Jess, okay, here's what here's what's going down today. <laughs> Blockheads. That's what I call my fan base now. Blockheads? Blockheads. I like that. It's a good fan base name. Yeah. Um, here's the deal. Jessica agreed to do this podcast. I did. But as soon as we sat down in the studio today, <laughs> it became evident to me that she did not understand the premise of the show. <laughs> because <laughs> let's... We're we're flipping the script a little bit. We only do this every once in a while. I'm doing this because you're my friend. You're funny. We're we're in the door guy trenches together Aww. here at the comedy store. Not for much longer since I've just been in my two weeks. But did you really? Mm-hmm. I had no idea. Je- you're not very observant, Jessica. I've been saying that like <laughs> since I walked into the damn studio today. Did you? Yes. <laughs> so Jessica wanted to talk about this movie that just came out that you were in. Yeah, you had uh, you had a part in, and it's called The Mule. Yes, written and directed. Well, not written by Clint Eastwood, but directed by Clint Eastwood, starring Clint Eastwood. Yes, and I he's, had, a, he's a great great man. And I, I mentioned this <laughs> last week to Jessica because I wanted to have her on because I, I I just wanted to. I thought you'd be a good guest, <laughs> and I said, "What movie do you want to talk shit about?" And Jessica said, "The Mule." I was in that. I just heard, what movie do you want to talk about? (laughs) (laughs) And I was like, obviously, The Mule. I was just in it, dude. So now we come down into the studio, and I'm like, all right, let's get ready to talk shit about this movie. And Jessica's like, wait, what? (laughs) I thought he meant, like, earlier, you know, when you said something about uh, talking shit or something, I thought you were like, shoot the shit. We're going (laughs) to... What? What? When have you ever heard the expression talk shit used interchangeably with shoot the shit? Well, I thought it was today. But <laughs> this is like we're just gonna talk some shit about the movie. Like we're just gonna talk shit. Like, that just means that means say mean things about the movie, Jessica. Oh, oh Jessica. Well, well, because I watched it's... the movie mm-hmm. and I was like, oh, I can see why she didn't like it. Oh! <laughs> I didn't because I fell asleep multiple I am, times. Uh, during Twenty six minutes in. So what? Okay, let's before before we before we have our back and forth about this movie. Okay. where you try and defend the mule because that's what this episode is turning into now. Okay. Talk to me about this experience of being in the movie for you because you're only the second person I've ever had on the show who is actually in the movie that they want to talk about. Oh. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, I mean, it was amazing, dude. Obviously, I got to meet Clint Eastwood. Mm -hmm. That is beyond. A legend. Right. He is 88 years old. There's not going to be many more chances. Now, I hear he's one of those guys directorially where he does, he's one and done. He'll do a take, and then you have to get it on the first try, and then that's it. I think that's how he was more back in the day. Um, It was a little bit, a few more takes on these, okay. Um, I think just because he's getting older and he he needs the lines m- more, you know, for him. Oh yeah, well, spe- and yeah, he's directing and he's starring, so he's got to right. put on uh, multiple brains at but once. But he doesn't take like he doesn't. They don't they don't pussyfoot around. Well, of course, like not. they get the shit done and they're in and they're out. I mean, they had this movie turned around in no time. I feel like Clint Eastwood is one of the least beat around the bush directors there is. Oh yeah, but he was or just so, humans. He was so cool though. Do you know he used to hang out at the comedy store back in the day? Clint Eastwood did? Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, I told him he was like I told him I said, you know, uh, I heard that you used to hang out at the comedy store. He's like, yeah, I did. You used to hang out over there. And I just wanted to extend an invitation for him to come back and he was like, yeah, well, maybe I'll do that. And I'm thinking he won't be. You think coming, you, you found, I don't think he will be. No, but you know, it was worth a shot. So, 
Okay, so I fell asleep multiple times during this movie, and I missed your part completely. I'm so really upset about this. I'm really upset that you made me watch this movie. Other people have really enjoyed it, you know? I'm not one of those people. It's, didn't you see the SNL sketch? It's like a superhero movie for old people. I mean, I did see that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think, okay. Let's... I do think maybe there was a little bit too much on the flower side. See, that's, things. I didn't mind that so much. Really? Here's, let me, it was let, a bit much for me. Here's what I think the pro the chief problem with the movie is. I saw the trailer for the movie... And I was really excited. I thought, this movie looks fucking cool. This is sort of in that, like, it, it's a definitely, it felt Oscar baity watching the trailer, but not in a way that felt cloying. It felt, you know, something was going to be, I was going to enjoy watching this movie. And there was going to be uh, a lot of tension. And there's, a, and there's, you know, definitely a cat and mouse story going on with Bradley Cooper and Clint Eastwood. And, right. And that's the way it felt like it was going to be. And then I started watching the movie, and all of the dramatic tension that it looked like was going to happen based on the trailer was absent. No, I agree. I agree, because that's what I'm saying. That's why I think there was too much of the uh, the family stuff. It's like the family yeah. stuff just didn't intertwine as well with him being an actual mule mm -hmm. <clears throat> that I would have I would have wanted as a viewer. Yeah, I'm I'm a hundred percent with you there. I think that there's a lot of stuff. The family stuff, I, you know, it's based on a true story. It's based on an it article uh, written by Sam Dolnick. And this, if you haven't seen this movie, 2018 American crime drama film produced, directed by Clint Eastwood, also plays the lead role. Screenplay based on a New York Times article called The Sinaloa Cartel's 90-Year-Old Drug Mule, which recounts the true story of Leo Sharp, a World War II veteran in his 80s who became a drug courier for the Sinaloa Cartel. So this movie is basically... Uh, it, it takes some stuff from that actual story. It modifies some things, makes him a Korean War right. veteran. Korean instead of instead being of World War Two. World War Two, yeah, yeah. But and he's um, <coughs> and I'm not, and I didn't read the article. Have you read the article at all? No, I haven't read the article. Basically, uh, Clint Eastwood. But plays he, wa the dude. he was a Lily guy. Yeah, he was okay. Yeah. So he's a Lily guy. So this movie, yeah, he plays a 90 year old horticulturist who's facing financial ruin and is estranged from his family. Because of flowers, I guess. Yeah, but that is the, some of the true part. <laughs> <laughs> That's so sad. And it's he like... Did, he did farm one day lilies. But it's not even about... I Look, the farm... The, that's, that part I kind of liked. Like you I, did? Well, I kind of like that he's like an old man going to flower shows. Right. And he's beloved that by these women. Yes, it's such the a nice... contrast is good. That's that's the my biggest problem with this movie. I don't think... I don't think it's a very good movie, but I don't think it's a... I think it's just a missed opportunity. Right. That's There's how more I really they could have done with it. it. Yeah. And then maybe that was the what hurt him as far as turning it around so quickly. Mm-hmm. Because there is so much more that because this story lends itself to so many different avenues it that does. would be so fun. It's a very interesting story. It is the trailer, and God bless everybody who makes trailers because you gotta. It takes a it takes a lot of a lot of work to make a movie this boring look as exciting. But as I'm gonna it tell was. you, I had a funny part. I don't so think you understand. So I was in the movie theater watching it, and, and everybody laughed. So what? That so was like the happened? biggest laugh of the movie. What it's probably the only laugh of the movie. There's like no <laughs> comedy in this whole movie. <laughs> what so, happened in your so part? So I played a lesbian biker. Okay. okay. It was a little bit of a stretch. Uh, yeah, no, there's, yeah, I can't picture that. I, I know, but I'm a good actress. So then, and if then. You're, if you can't, if you're not watching the video of this episode, by the way, just. Take a look on YouTube, and you'll see why Jessica uh, basically fits this part to a T. Right. Well, I missed my opportunity on Orange is the New Black, and then this, this was it. But um, So I play a lesbian biker, right? Yep. I'm in a lesbian biker gang. Uh, we're called Dykes uh, on Bikes. They actually had to borrow that name from San Francisco, like the San Francisco chapter. Of Dykes on Bikes? Yeah, yeah. So okay. they had to ask permission to be able to use that name. Yeah, that definitely seems like... You got to go through the proper channels to make sure yeah. that name is available. It's one. It seemed it. It should have been snapped up long ago. Well, I mean, it is. They just had to get permission to use it. 
Right. So you go to so they go get permission from the chapter for Dykes on Bikes. Yeah, and they agreed. And, you're and the, they did a special thanks at the end for that. I thought that was cool. That is nice. Yeah, yeah. So you're the leader of the of the bike. I'm gang. not necessarily the leader. You're I'm just the in one it. I'm the one trying to fix the bike. Oh, okay. Okay, so this bike is broken down and I'm sitting down, I'm like crouched down trying to start it and figure it out, right? Mm-hmm. And it, it's not starting up. And here comes Clinty's and we're at a we're at like a, a vegetable stand. A fruit okay. stand like or whatever. A fruit, like a roadside stand yeah. of some sort. Okay. Right. So, in, in, and Clint has stopped and got some cherries, right? Okay. So, Clint's coming out and he sees me uh, working on this bike. He's looking at this bike and he's like, I forget his line. What? Oh, that's an old 69. It's okay. I also forget his line. You didn't even see this part. <laughs> so shut up. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> He didn't even see it. But he was looking at the bike. He's like, oh, that's an old 69-something hog, blah, blah, blah. I used to have one of them damn near ran it into the ground or whatever, right? Uh-huh. So, and then he comes over and he mistakes us as men. He thinks we're men. Wacky. It's a, well, very I'm, wacky. <laughs> oh, my God. An well, old the, man doesn't realize lesbians right. are women. Well, and I did, <laughs> the way they did my hair, too, and he comes up from behind, you know, from us. Okay. And they had it pulled back like a, you know, because I already have like a... You already got you've got a uh, you've got a definitely like um right. like an edgy haircut. Yeah, yeah, and I didn't have the mohawk full back on the back, so it was just the top. So they tied it back like a guy, mm-hmm. like a guy biker might would do, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like you would see in Sons of Anarchy sorta, or some shit. Sort of man bun esque, but not yeah, really. Yeah, but it was just that little ponytail, you know? Yeah, yeah. So he comes up behind me. <laughs> Just like the creepiest ponytail, like the yeah, yeah. like the ponytail like... you don't want a teacher to have. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Absolutely not. Uh, um, no, I'm, I'm, I have to stay after class with this motherfucker. <laughs> Absolute. I'm calling the cops yeah. on this school. They're hiding a cabal of pedophiles. Yes. <laughs> so uh, he comes up behind and he calls us uh, sirs or whatever, sir or something. Uh-huh. And then the girl beside me, she's like, "Hey, old man." We're not dudes or something. She's like, we're dykes on bikes. And he was like, oh, okay. So he like walks off. He's taking a thing of his, oh, he tells us what's wrong with the bike. He's like, it's probably this, whatever. Uh-huh. So he starts to walk off after that. And then she looks at me and she's like, well, what do you think? And I'm like, well, it's a, it's a good early check. That was my first line. Uh-huh. Okay, okay, that was my first line. Okay. okay. <laughs> it's a good early check, right? Right. And then, uh. As I finish saying that, it flips back to Clint. He turns around. And he's like, uh, "Yeah, no, no problem, Jess. Whatever that. That's what it is." And I say, "Thanks, pops." And I wink at him. And I totally improvise the wink. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, yes, and it felt like Clint Eastwood deserved a wink. It deserved a wink at this moment, and it, and and it worked perfect because he was like, "Oh, you're welcome, Dykes," and that gets a huge laugh. Because it's this old man saying, you're welcome, Dykes, because she said we're Dykes on bikes. So wait a minute. So you you don't even actually say the line that gets the laugh. The wink probably got a laugh. The wink gets a little giggle. The wink, the wink opens him up for it Clint Eastwood to say, you're welcome, Dykes. Right. And pop open this crowd. Because it definitely it built that sexual tension between me and Clint. <laughs> And that's what the crowd's been looking for all along. Absolutely. Clint Eastwood needs someone to have sexual tension with in this movie. Actually, he did have two threesomes in this movie. Now, that was a little bit of a stretch, too. I will say. He had two. You didn't even notice that? No, I told you. (laughs) I was asleep for so much of this movie because of how boring it was. Are you telling me I missed all the exciting shit? Yeah, he had. Well, he had two threesomes. And that does seem like a stretch for a 90 year old man. You know? I mean. Cialis is very good. I know, but ninety, you're gonna have two threesomes, three, well, two okay. women. Is it not? Is it back to back? No, but it doesn't matter. Are you really? <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I mean, I'm with you. I don't buy that a ninety year old man has enough fluid in his body to, to merit two having women. sex with two women even I one want... time. Yeah. So that's a little bit c- of a fucking, stretch. He's coming dust. He's like a like a like a bag in a depression era Looney Tunes cartoon. Right now, I'm not saying that the up. real Clint Eastwood couldn't, because you know, I feel like he's probably pra- well practiced in threesomes. Yeah, yeah, probably. But he's also 88 years old. I know. I know. He's got, he 
It's not like just because he's in, <laughs> just because he's a Lothario that he doesn't know don't, how to. Don't spit big words at me. Lothario, Lothario. Means he's a good. He he knows how to. He's a good lay. He knows how to. Oh. He knows how to fuck that a woman. Right. Sound like a good lay. Uh, he well, it's that sounds he, like you're lazy, a Lothario, like you're lethargic. <laughs> well, I'm not the one who invented words, <laughs> Jessica. <laughs> I didn't invent <laughs> words. Lothario. Blame, blame. <laughs> that sounds like a Dr. Seuss word, actually. Let's figure out. Where it See, came this from? is where we have to. This is what the <laughs> podcast has turned into because you don't understand the fucking premise. Now, this is like a spelling bee prep podcast. <laughs> well, Lothario no- is, uh, <laughs> is an, a, a word of English origin. <laughs> A man who behaves selfishly and irresponsibly in his sexual relationships with women. See, a good guy. <laughs> yeah, just a solid dude. <laughs> right. Yeah. From a character in Rose, Fair Penitent. I don't know what... Fair Penitent? Uh-huh. Yep. Don't know what that means. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a book from a, a, a thing. Oh, man. That's not even right. Man, Jessica's vaping on, on podcasts now. This is where we're at, folks. <laughs> so, Clint Eastwood has three. That okay? Two threesomes. He has two. Thre- two. See, this is stuff. What I sometimes do, especially before movies that I haven't seen for the podcast, this is, is kind of talking shit, though. It is definitely talking shit. Now we're getting into some stuff. Is I read the plot of the movie on Wikipedia, so that way I can be there and present and like understand what's going on. Right. Sometimes I don't because I like being surprised every once in a while. This movie, I was like, I th- I have a feeling I know what's going to happen. He's probably going to get caught, and he right. does, and yeah. he winds up but like it was sad. L- trimming flowers caught. in jail, but like a nice white collar jail. I mean, yeah, what kind of what kind of a regular ass jail has a has a garden for orchids and well, lilies? I mean, I feel like they have gardens, but I'm not not lily gardens. Oh, but I'm sure he could get some seeds in. Maybe you know, especially I mean, you saw him; he was a prize winning seedman. <laughs> <laughs> Seedman <laughs> is one of the threesomes that Clint Eastwood has in jail. Did I miss that too? Is it like a post credit scene where Clint Eastwood is just railing two dudes from no. the cartel? But you also can't say that white men don't get privilege when it comes to jail time. Because I'm going to tell you, my dad had five DUIs, I think it was. Uh-huh. So it ended up he had to do jail time. Right? Right. But because he was a functioning alcoholic and went to work every day, right, on the weekdays, uh, they allowed him to do his jail time on the weekends. So I had to Ooh, drop wow. him off on and Friday go to jail evenings every weekend. and then pick him up Sunday night. And this is just at county, I assume? Yeah, the county, well, the city county jail. Yeah, yeah. so he's not like going to, he's not like in prison, prison. Like, uh, no, but like he had Clint to do Easter jail is. time. Well, yeah, because he got five DUIs. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, I don't see them doing that for... That's a very privileged move. Well, you know what else is a very privileged move? Being at a fucking wedding, like a bridal shower, and then a, just a random guy showing up who's, like, the only Mexican at the party and being like, hey, guess what? Because I am a Mexican man, I have deep connections to the cartel. Well, I can get you money, buddy. To be fair, you want that dinero? To be, to, let's ha, say, ha, Clint. <laughs> this is what this is a this is an old man fantasy. Yeah, every Mexican is involved with the cartel. But one of the white girls was dating a Mexican, and that's very plausible. Well, yeah, I believe that. But do you also believe that? Cl- I feel like Clint Eastwood looked at that part of the story, and I don't know how this man got involved with the cartel. In real life, but I feel like Clint Eastwood saw a man get involved with the cartel, and he's like, ah, "Make him date a Mac, make him date a Mexican." And that's the one. But I mean, it, it didn't like it wasn't like at the at the wedding. He didn't come up to him like, "Yo, Holmes." That's basically how it happened. Like Clint Eastwood got kicked out of the wedding. The we- this is something I do remember. Clint Eastwood gets kicked out of the bridal part of the bridal shower. But didn't the guy just come out to check out his truck at first, and then he brought up, "Oh, you could." Right, see, but see, who who does that? Men, that doesn't make... men, real men, Jay. No, 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 real... not not the checking out the truck part. <laughs> look, I'll look at a truck any day of the week. Yeah, pal. <laughs> <laughs> no, I won't. I don't give a shit about cars. <laughs> but <laughs> but what self-respecting, legitimate criminal is going to look at a ninety-year-old man with a truck and be like? 
you know, I can probably convince this man to help me run drugs across the border. You know, but it was a smart. Oh shit! I moved it too much. And uh, it's okay. I think we're still good. It's yeah. Are we still good? I yeah, just yeah. can't hear it. Okay. Um, what was I saying? You're talking about um. Here, I'll just I'll just cue you in. Sorry. But what self-respecting ninety-year-old man? Oh, sorry. No, I fu- I fucked it up again. <laughs> this is on me. What self-respecting Mexican gang member of a cartel is going to look at a 90-year-old white guy and be like, you know what? I bet I can butter him up into running drugs for you the cartel. You know what? A fucking smart one, dude. A smart one. Because they saw an opportunity. They saw, you know what? They'll, they'll never suspect this guy. This guy's white, privileged, older. Who's going to pull over an old man? He's not going to speed. You know? He's going to go the legal limit. He's going to be in a truck. Uh, that's obvious. Looks like, oh well, this is just an old redneck dude or something with a truck, and yeah. he's driving to see his grandkids or whatever. <clears throat> you know, like what? what? And he almost got caught by that one cop with the with the with the dog. Yeah, and he put his he put his Ben Gay on him. He, that's how he got away yeah. with it. I didn't see that part. <laughs> I didn't see that part at all. He gets away with it by putting Ben Gay on the on the guy. Yeah, I know on the dog. On the dog's nose or something. Oh, and so he can't smell can't the remember. drugs. Yeah, but he, he yeah, he did, like uh, made him get away from the smell of the the drugs mm-hmm. by using his Ben Gay. Okay, it was genius. I mean, that's a very that's like old man MacGyver, like using yeah. Ben. Uh, it's okay. I want you to tell me all of the exciting parts of this movie that I missed while I was asleep. Well, do you know that Trevina Springer, who's another comic, was in it? No. See, this is an interesting one. I feel like you would have already mentioned by now. Okay. That I can't believe you mentioned. Because some Trevina people, Springer? some articles really were upset about this part. So on his on on the road, he comes across a couple that has a kid and they have a flat tire. Okay. And well, the guy is very like millennial and he's trying to get somebody on the phone, AAA on the phone, but he can't get any signal because mm-hmm. he doesn't know how to change a flat tire. Right? Right. And this, like every modern man. Like every modern man. But no these, man knows how to change a flat tire. I'm Clint Eastwood. I'm going to say something. Yeah. Yeah. And this couple, though, <laughs> uh, is black. Okay. Right? And you remember this guy's a 90-year-old man, right? So he stops to help him. Right. He's like, well, I can change a flat tire. And he calls them Negroes. Okay. You know what? I actually do think maybe I remember this yeah, part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were like, well, we, we don't use that anymore (laughs) you know i get what they were going for that this is a 90 year old guy that was that stuck in another time Mm -hmm. you know but you kind of would think he would know not to use that see let me i'm gonna stop you right there because you already without even meaning to i think just pitched a way better movie than mule (laughs) What? a 90 year old guy who's stuck in another time a 90-year-old time traveler oh, yeah. played by Clint Eastwood. <laughs> His truck is magic. He gets sent back in time and he all of a sudden all of his all of his words and mannerisms make sense. Yeah. Well, it made the, the lesbian part made sense to me because that's a newer newer thing that has like come out out in the open, but mm-hmm. like civil rights has been out for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, civil rights <laughs> I mean, gay it, rights is kind of they kind of released it a long time ago. It, it's right. civil rights has made pretty pretty good money at the box office. Right. I don't know if you've checked in lately. <laughs> yeah, so that that I will agree. That was a bit of a bit of a stretch. I I they could have done that one different. So okay, so let me let me talk to you some about some of these reviews because it got pretty it got mixed reviews. It didn't do terrible. It didn't do great. And I think that this is. I, I did think it was a good movie. And you know the mom, you know the or the his uh, uh, the, wife? the actual mom, his wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She Diane Weist. Yeah, she played um because she was in my favorite movie of all time, The Lost is, Boys. I've never seen The Lost Boys. Oh my god! I hear it's good. I missed I missed out on a bunch. The of The Lost stuff Boys up, is Jessica. my favorite, and apparently they're going to come out with a series here soon. I'm really not looking for it because hopefully it'll be good. But mm-hmm. I don't my my uh, hopes are not high. Because uh, they they tried to do a sequel to Lost Boys and it sucked. But anyway, she was the mom, and I was so excited to be in a movie 
that I mean, she was in my favorite movie of all time. So this is amazing, right? You know, and you got to meet her. No, but I got to share the screen with her. Poor Jessica. I got to meet Clint Eastwood. You did get to meet. I Clint ate Eastwood. one of his cherries, and they thought that was hilarious on set. So let me ask you some things. Okay. So this movie on Rotten Tomatoes got a sixty six percent. Out of a hundred. Out of a hundred. Now I don't usually read movie reviews. I'm not Why? somebody because I don't. I like at this point in my life, I like going into watching movies and being in able my to develop. movie watching career. Yeah. Look. <laughs> Hey, yeah, that's you what don't want to go it. in with a preconceived notion, right? I don't want to go in with preconceived notion. I want to be able to. Be, I want to be able to develop the the notion on my own. I want yeah. to conceive my own notions. I like that. I think it's just a way better way to go. It's very less uh, Lotherup of you. What? Lotherup. Lotherup. What was the word? Lothario. <laughs> Loth. What? <laughs> Jessica. Oh <laughs> boy. Okay. So we're going to read some uh, reviews from top critics. Because this movie... What makes them top critics, This though? is um, We're talking people like uh, well-known publications. That's basically all that it takes. So, like, newspapers or magazines that have been around for a long time. RogerEbert.com is usually a, uh, a top critic website. That kind of stuff. I've heard of Roger Egypt. So this is a... Roger Egypt? <laughs> Are you? Who are you? Are you playing a trick on me? No, it came out wrong. I just... <laughs> Roger Egypt is the name of the of the lead character in the Clint Eastwood time travel movie that we're going to write now. <laughs> you have a pipeline to Clint Eastwood now. Now we have to make this movie, Jessica. You know this. I know. I got to end. We got to make this happen. Right. I'm Roger good. Clint Eastwood stars as Roger Egypt in An Old Man <laughs> Out of Time. It's like a, uh, what's the Indian? No. The Indian in the cupboard? Is that what you're looking for? Are you looking for Back to no! the Future? No. The guy, I'm, I'm thinking of the big stone. Fall. Crazy horse? No. It's coming through the cave. Indiana Jones? Yeah. Did you just call, you <laughs> called him the Indian. Indiana. That's what you <laughs> Indiana, Indian. They're doing totally <laughs> different things. <laughs> People who are from Indiana are not called Indians, though. No, but you can see the confusion. No, I can't see the confusion. (laughs) I can't. Is it Indiana spelled like Indian A? It is, yeah. (laughs) You're such a great guest. This can't even. (laughs) This is so much better than I thought it was going to be when I first sat down and Jessica told me she thought we were going to be praising this middling movie. Because this is the thing. I don't. I'll say this. I don't think this is a bad movie, but I don't think it's a particularly good movie either. It's kind of just below average. I think, but you know what? I think it had really going for it. What? Is that it was a change of pace of what's out there. Yeah. I mean, I'll give you that. And that's the thing is there's a lot of stuff in here. This is this is uh, reading some of the reviews of the bad movies or the bad the bad reviews of this movie. This is one that really hits home for me and sort of sort of nails how I feel about it. This is from Barry Hertz of The Globe and Mail. Oh, fuck Barry. There is an interesting movie or five movies stashed away somewhere in the, in the mule. Good luck to those hoping to sniff it out. Mm-hmm. I think... Oh, that was his whole review? No. I'm not going to read his whole review. Okay. I'm just going to read the sound bite. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go... Let's. This is from Christy Lemire of RogerEgypt.com. <laughs> Name's Christiana Lamai. Chris, what? <laughs> Her name is Christy Lamire. Okay. This is a, a bad review, also, but it's only a two out of four. This is a, this is an average review. The mule repeatedly spells out and hammers home its message about the importance of family, but it ultimately rings hollow. And I think that that signs the or it, it lines up well with what we both have gripes with about this movie, which is the family stuff doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter. It does. I will say it feels like a separate entity. I would rather see 
Clint Eastwood, any kind of family stuff, I would like to see his family crumbling as a result of what he's doing. Right. Like, he should have been on the road, and I feel like they were like, well, where have you been? What's going on? And, like, yeah. little clues pop up or whatever. I don't want to step into the movie and already feel like he is trying to claw his way back right. into the family. And his daughter hating him that long. Yeah. Like, oh, his daughter hates yeah. him. Yeah. And he wasn't even an alcoholic or anything. Right. At least, like, get a legitimate reason to hate yeah. him. He's just like flowers, my guy. He, yeah, he, had, he liked flowers so much that he missed your wedding or whatever, was late, blah, blah, blah. I mean, come on, dude. Yeah, come on. Come my on. dad held a gun to me and my stepmom's head to say our prayers. You know, it Now could, that sounds like a way more interesting Clint Eastwood movie. Right, it could, yeah, it could be worse, you it know? It could be worse. So she, I feel like she was really hard on him in the movie, and that was a little bit too much. So here's a movie that gets some good reviews, and some of the good reviews are like this. When the old man finally mans it to his failings, the movie succeeds with special poignancy. This is from Joe Morgenstern. This is a good review. I like Morgenstern. Rex Reed from The Observer. There's nothing heroic about Earl, but in Eastwood's 38th film as a director, he makes the character of felonious centerpiece as likable as anyone could ever imagine. Clint Eastwood does play... A, a, he plays the guy well. It's not like he's unlikable. Oh, yeah, it was made for him. Yeah. The story, the story itself, whoever wrote it could have been tighter. How they wrote the script. Yeah. It's just a, at the end of the day, and this is and this is the last review that I'll quote here is from Manola Dargis of the New York Times. Manola. 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 Like an envelope. That's a Manila. Okay. So this is from Manila Jarvis of the New Pork Shines. Because New Pork Shines. <laughs> I <I'm> just <laughs> look. I figure if I say them wrong, maybe you'll hear them correctly. <laughs> Newport, oh, New New York Times. Yes, ah! <laughs> we got it. We did the it. New Pork Shines. I like that because the movie never builds to something greater than its parts. Eastwood ends up blowing raspberries and floundering for meaning in a void. Blowing raspberries, like. Mm hmm. And she's not being literal here. I don't even unless there's something else that I missed while I fell asleep during this movie. I don't think there's any parts where Clint Eastwood is literally going. Because the movie never builds to something greater than its parts, Eastwood ends up blowing raspberries and floundering for meaning in a void. Fancy writers. I mean, she's basically just saying that the movie's kind of rudderless. Yeah, and I it, mean. And it kind of meanders. She brings in Flounder, which he's from a whole different movie. <laughs> Yeah, he is from a whole different movie. Yeah. You're right. That's what Little Mermaid or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't sound like she knows what she's talking about to me. <laughs> Jessica. <laughs> I want to be a part of your world. I want to know. <laughs> I want to go where your people are. Me too. Oh, my God. So this movie, it's a movie that I can see. It's going to run on basic cable forever. It's not going to be... Looked Basic up, cable? You don't think we're gonna go to Netflix? I would love to be on Netflix. But that's not that's not what I mean. I what I mean by that is it's gonna be. This is one of those movies that's like tailor made to show endlessly on AMC on a Saturday afternoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. like this is a it's movie. It's a good movie. That I, I do think it's a pretty oh, that's good a, movie. That's it was a, shot well. That's a little it looks bit of a stretch. Good. That's a bit of a stretch. It's definitely. Um, it, it it was needed. I feel like this kind of film was needed. We got so many superhero movies that I could fucking throw up. You know, like I've had enough, please. And you really buy into the take that this is an old person superhero movie. Yeah. Yeah. It's different. Uh, we, all they do is with the superhero movies, they're coming out with Spider Man after Spider Man after Spider Man. But okay, well, I mean, look, I also am not a huge fan of superhero movies. This year kind of turned me around on superhero movies. But I think that if you're if you're looking at this movie and saying there are not enough movies like this. You're half right. Right now. There's not a lot coming out in the theater like this. Well, I... There's plenty of Netflix and, I'm, you know... I think there are movies coming out in the theater like this. I think there are movies that are coming out in the theater with compelling premises that are based on real-life stories or that have something different about it. Did you ever see Hell or High Water? No, a, I know the saying. Okay, so that's a movie that I think kind of is in a similar vein... To what the mule is trying to do. And I'm going to recommend that you watch it. I think you'd really, really enjoy this movie. Okay. 
it's Hell or High Water? Hell or High Water. It's a movie set in West Texas about two brothers who are bank robbers, and they're robbing banks in order to pay off the uh, the the defaulted mortgage on their family home because ah uh, and it's been a minute since i've seen it so i might be getting like it's a plot always the, detail like wrong. the family home mortgage why couldn't it just be like their student loans well because this is this <laughs> look <laughs> does anybody want to watch a bunch of like stuck up white kids paying off their student loans oh you're right exactly That'd be horrible. No, I would rather watch Clint Eastwood time traveling as Robert Egypt <laughs> trying to stop those kids. You know what? Now we have the villains for the movie. <laughs> Somehow some kids. Yeah. So this move here's the movie, okay? And we're gonna write this and we're gonna pitch it to Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood is a janitor at uh, a high like an Ivy League college where some kids figured out how to do time travel. And he's he's going in there, and it's Goodwill hunting style, and he Can sees... Can he work with Neil Flynn from... Uh... From the middle the thing, the middle? Yeah, of course he can. And he, he shows up just as the kids are, like, jumping through this time travel machine into right. the time portal, and they're like, we're going to go steal all of the gold. Right, and we, can we, we need a hot black guy. The hot black guy is going to be someone Clint Eastwood is going to wind up. They're going to wind up back in the 1800s. This is going to be a slave. And Clint Eastwood oh, no. is also going to learn that he can't call this man a Negro. <laughs> but he's going to learn it from somebody that's period appropriate for him to learn it from. But then these underground lesbians. That's, yeah. It's a side <laughs> branch of the Underground Railroad. The right. underground lesbians. Yeah, come and help. Also led by Harriet Tubman. <laughs> and they together stop the white stuck up Ivy League kids from stealing gold so they can pay off their student loans to Yarvard Yarvard University. Let's do it. Bob Egypt. I'd watch that. Let's instead make a plea for one. financing right now for this film. Okay. So if anybody's listening, uh if you're follow us on follow us on Kickstarter, go to Indie Jojo, go to Blow Fun B. All the places where you can fund movies, right, right, and um, and 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 start a fund for this. We're gonna we're gonna get it going. Um, also, you know, if you if you're a big head honcho out there, you know, we can always use a good honcho. I feel like I feel like <laughs> if there are any big head honchos listening to the two knuckleheads <laughs> that have recorded this episode, we're never gonna work again. But it's okay. <laughs> Because we're going to make this movie and we're going to make it happen. Yeah, yeah, this is it. So This is going to make our career. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm excited to embark but on I this I still new recommend phase of people go see you. The Mule. Go I see think it while it's, it's a in good theaters. movie. It's probably not going to be in theaters for much longer, so go check it out right. while you can. And Develop Clint your own is an icon. And you, you know? know what? I will say this is definitely way better than the other movie that he directed this year. What was that one? 1517 to Paris. I haven't watched it. Don't watch it. Okay. It's bad. This movie, I'd say. You know what? I'm not going to say it's worth a watch, but Jessica, you can say worth a watch. It's worth a watch. Go watch Jessica's part and then just leave, and you'll be good. Go get a go get a refund. It's still early enough in the movie that you can get a refund and then wait for it to come out on minutes Netflix. In? Yeah. You know what was really cool too is in the credits. My name is Five Down uh, from Bradley Cooper. <laughs> Jessica, where can the listeners find you besides Five Down from Bradley Have Cooper? Have we been an hour mule? already? No, but I don't run an hour. Uh. <laughs> I keep it tight. That's the other. Tight this shit. movie's way too long. It's almost two hours long. Sh- shorten your fucking movie, Clint Eastwood. Yeah, but you want to put more in it and shorten it. No, you need to. You know, you're I being want wishy-washy. less in it. I want less in it. I want to get rid of all of the stuff about his family and make this a tight, like hour and twenty minute or hour and thirty minute movie where he's on the run from Bradley Cooper and Lawrence Fishburne. That's yeah. all. Where yeah, I kind of agree with that a little bit more. That would have been a little bit okay, but I like it anyway. Uh, follow me at Jess Wellington two mm-hmm. uh, on Instagram and Twitter. I'm uh, Jessica Wellington Entertainment on Facebook, so like me there and uh, YouTube. Uh, I don't know. You search for Jessica Wellington, and I pop up. Yeah, and uh, you got a podcast of yourself uh, of your own, yes, right? You please. and Felicia Michaels, By right? George, 
Why have I not? It's called The Liars Club. Uh, and I co-host that with Felicia Michaels, who is a bombshell. So watch it uh, even for that. Um, we do What we do is we have two comics come on and they tell us two stories. One that's true and one that's a lie. And we try to figure out which is which. Oh, man. It's really fun. That does sound fun. It's so interesting. So please listen to The Liars Club. Wonderful. And you can find me at Diet J on Twitter and Instagram, jlightcomedy.com for show dates. I'm doing a lot more stuff in Los Angeles coming up soon because I just got a job uh, that I can't really talk about in public yet, I don't think. But Ooh. it means I'm going to be in L.A. for a while. So When are you going to have a, a J Zero come out? Whenever I finally get rid of how sweet I am. <laughs> Too much sugar in this body, baby. Yeah, J Light, Diet J, and J Zero. Bingo. <laughs> if you can f- <laughs> Guys, this has been Blockbusting. Go see something good for a change.